Hi there, and welcome to Lesson 4.1 for Precalculus. So today we are starting our journey through trigonometry. And to, specifically today, we're going to learn about a new type of measure for angles, and that is radians. You're familiar with degrees, and we're going to learn how to convert degrees into radians. Okay, so what exactly is trigonometry? Trigonometry is the study of triangles and how angles and sides of triangles relate to each other. It is used extensively in astronomy, in architecture, and it is a key part to calculus. So if you're ever wanting to go on to higher math, you will definitely need to know your trigonometry. Okay, so let's kind of just review some basic terminology here about an angle. So the standard position of an angle has the following characteristics, and we're going to be referring to this angle, and pretty soon we're going to learn about a unit circle. So we need to know what exactly are we talking about. So the vertex, when it's in standard position, so we're going to be graphing angles on a Cartesian system, so on your just standard graph. The vertex will always be at 0, 0. And your initial side will be on the x-axis. So here's your x, here's your y. So your initial side always lies on the x-axis. The terminal side is what makes that angle measure. So we go from the initial side to the terminal side. Positive angles, so for example, if we were to say that this had a measure of, let's say it's 60 degrees. That means that we start on the initial side and we go counterclockwise this way. But we could also say that this angle is negative 300 degrees by going counter or by going clockwise. So from starting from the initial side and rotating around this way. And it would have the same measure, it's just a negative, so that would be negative 300 degrees because there are 360 degrees around if we start from here and go all the way around. That's 360 degrees. Okay, so let's move on. In the past, we have always measured angles in degrees, but we can also measure angles as radians. A radian, typically we refer to as radian as theta, that's one of our denominations here. So this symbol, it's kind of like a cursive O, is theta. It can be found by the arc length divided by the radius. And we don't really need to know that too much. We're going to just want to know how to convert it. But one full rotation, so if we were to graph and go around one whole rotation, we know that that's 360 degrees. Or it's 2 pi radians. So 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians. Okay, let's move on. So these are some common radian measures and you're going to have to memorize these. I know I don't make you guys memorize a ton in class but you need to memorize these and we're going to have speed quizzes which I'll go over in class later on to help you with this. So 30 degrees is equal to pi over 6 radians. So this is on this chart that we have right here, this is going to be your degree measure on the left hand side. And this is going to be your radian measure on the right hand side. So 30 degrees is pi over 6. 45 degrees equals pi over 4. 60 degrees is pi over 3. 90 is pi over 2. 180 degrees. So if we go a straight angle right there, we've gone 180 degrees. That's pi. 270 would be down here. It's going to be 3 pi over 2, or back to the start, back to where we started, that will be 2 pi. So pause this video right now, write all these down. You're going to need to know these, and like I said, you're going to need to memorize them. Not for tomorrow, but definitely in the very near future here. And the other thing that I want to review for you with you, and I know we've done this before, is what our quadrants are. So we always start in where both x and y are positive, and that is quadrant 1. And then we go counterclockwise. So it goes 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, let's move on. So we want to find what's called a coterminal angle to the positive angle pi over 4. First, what does that mean? 
So remember on the previous slide, we had pi over four is about 45 degrees. So this angle right here has a measure of pi over four. Coterminal means that it's an angle that gets us to the same spot, but we can get there a couple different ways. So let's say that we want to go, we start it here at our initial side, go counterclockwise, we go past it, and then end up right back there. We're still at the same exact position. Well, we can figure out what that is by taking pi over four and adding two pi. Because remember, two pi means one full rotation around. So that gets us pi over four plus two pi. Let's get a common denominator. So we have pi over four plus eight pi over four, which equals nine pi over four. This would be a coterminal angle. We can also go the opposite direction, and I'm going to change pen colors for that. So we could also go in the negative direction around like this. And the way that we figure that one out is we take our 2 pi, and now we subtract pi over 4 from it. Which is going to give us 7 pi over 4. But remember we went in the negative direction, so that's actually negative 7 pi over 4. So negative 7 pi over 4, pi over 4, and 9 pi over 4 all get us to the same angle measure that gets us right here to this line. Okay, now what quadrant is theta equals pi, 5 pi over 6 in? So I know that you guys don't have these angles measured, these angles memorized yet. But take a look at your chart. On the previous chart, we said that this was zero. I'm just going to mark each of the main axes. That was pi over two. This is pi. This is three pi over two. And then we get back here and we're at two pi. We want to know five pi over six. So we can make these into common denominators. Pi over two is equal to three pi over six. Pi, we can change that with a common denominator and get 6 pi over 6. This would become 9 pi over 6, and so on and so forth. We see that we want 5 pi over 6. Well, 5 pi over 6 is going to be between 3 pi over 6 and 6 pi over 6. So it is in our second quadrant. Okay, let's move on. Now we're going to talk about complementary and supplementary angles. So you guys are familiar with complementary angles and that they're two angles whose sum is 90 degrees. But remember, we said earlier that pi over 2 equals 90 degrees. So now we can also talk about complementary angles with regards to radians. And that would be two angles whose sum is pi over 2. And supplementary angles are going to be two angles whose sum is equal to pi because pi is the equivalent of 180 degrees. So on your homework, you're going to have to find the complement or the supplement to two different angles, but they're going to be given to you in radians. Okay, I know I'm throwing a lot of this at you right now. But we're going to move on to some examples. So let's find the complement to pi over 3. So we know complementary angles add up to pi over 2. So that means we have pi over 3 plus another angle equals pi over 2. So again, the first thing you're going to want to do is get a common denominator. So our common denominator is 6. So we're going to multiply this by 2 over 2 and this by 3 over 3. So now we have 2 pi over 6 plus x equals 3 pi over 6. Subtract 2 pi over 6 from both sides. And we see that our complement, x, is going to equal pi over 6. And that would be your answer. Okay, now what about the supplement to pi over 4? Let me go ahead and clear this off here. So we're going to do the same thing, but now we have to deal with pi. So we want pi over 4 plus our supplementary angle to equal pi, because pi is the equivalent to 180 degrees. Okay, so we're going to do the same exact thing and get our common denominator, which is 4. 
So we need to multiply pi by 4 over 4. So we get pi over 4 plus x equals 4 pi over 4. Subtract pi over 4 from both sides and we see that x equals 3 pi over 4. And that would be the supplement to pi over 4. Okay, I'm going to clear that off. So degrees and radians, we are going to learn how to convert them. So one degree is equal to pi over 180 radians. And one radian equals 180 degrees over pi. So we are going to use these conversion factors. So if we're wanting to get degrees, change something to degrees, we can multiply it by pi over 180 and vice versa. To change something into radians, multiply it by 180 over pi. So we want to convert 3 pi over 4 to degrees. Okay, so we have 3 pi over 4. We need to convert it to degrees. So I'm going to use this conversion factor right here because it has degrees on top. So I'm going to multiply that by 180 over pi. Our pi's will cancel. We don't want pi in a degree measure. And now we just simply multiply this and simplify. So we have 3 times 180 divided by 4 gives us 135 degrees. So 3 pi over 4 equals 135 degrees. Okay, let's move on to the next one. We're going to convert 210 to radians. So we're wanting to convert it to radians, which means that we want our pi to be on top. Because remember, pi and 180 are equivalent. Okay, so we have 210 degrees times pi over 180. So we're just going to keep this as a fraction and simplify. So if you did 210 divided by 180, you're going to get a decimal. But remember your math fraction button. So go ahead and convert that decimal into a fraction, and we see that we get 7 6. But we have this pi, and we want that in our answer. So we have 7 pi over 6, and that is 210 rate degrees. So 210 degrees equals 7 pi over 6. Okay, we're going to move on. So the last thing that we're going to learn today is about finding the arc length of a circle. So let's say we have a circle. And we've got our, our center of our circle. And we're wanting to find how much of this arc right here, what that measure is. How long is that? Well, we can figure that out if we have our radius So if we know our length of our radius, and if we know our degree measure that's made by that arc in terms of radians. So our arc length, S, equals our radius times our degree measure in radians. So we have a circle with a radius of 9 feet. So R equals 9. And it has a central angle of pi over 6. So our theta equals pi over 6. We want to know what is the length of the arc. That's easy. We've got this formula right here. So our arc length, which is denoted by s, equals 9 times pi over 6. Multiply that all out in your calculator, and we get that our arc length is 4.71. And this was in terms of feet, so feet. And we have solved that problem. OK. So that is it for today. I know it's probably a lot of new material for you, but hopefully you were able to understand this, and if you have any questions, please let me know. All right, have a good one. Bye-bye.